Okay, great. Thanks. Here we are back online. Um, we are going to be looking at S142, <coughs> which is um, a, res a, a bill that will, um, well, let's just go through the bill. Let's have Michael um, walk us through it instead of me trying to explain what it's going to do. We'll just have Michael walk us through it and then we'll have the dis discussion, okay? Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of Senate Government Operations Committee. I'm Michael Chernick from Legislative Council. Before I proceed on the specifics of S-142, I feel a necessity to explain why this is a bill and not a resolution, because I understand there's been a degree of confusion over the weeks. And the reason is that the sponsor, oh, Senator Rahm, had requested that this be a day that's continuously uh, observed in Vermont, not on a one-time basis. And when I do resolutions for days or weeks or months, they're simply for that year. In order for them to become uh, in codified in Vermont law, they need to go into Title I. Uh, we have a whole list of specialized days that are separate from the legal holidays. And that's why this is a bill. So I just wanted to clarify that point so everybody can understand why I did what I did. I also want to acknowledge, and he'll be possibly joining us momentarily, uh, Mitchell Patel, one of our three VLS clinicians. He's a third year student at VLS and he was extraordinarily helpful. We did this as a team and I wanna make sure he has, we wanted to make sure all our clinicians had bill drafting opportunities during the course of the winter, even though they're working remotely. And Mituel did a fine job, was very helpful, had some excellent ideas. And I wanted to make sure that he gets due credit. With that being said, and you may see him on the Zoom momentarily. We do. Yeah, He's great, there. Great. With that being said, let's go over the bill. It is S-142. It's an act relating to designating August 31 as Overdose Awareness Day. Uh, there are several findings to this. There are, let us see, there are six findings after our discussions over the course of a number of weeks. Uh, a number of these came from other states and we consolidated them and uh, morphed them to meet Senator Rahm's needs and to keep them in Vermont statutory language law. And the first one provides that according to the Department of Health, our own Department of Health uh, monthly, and again, I want to thank uh, uh, Mituel. He did a lot of this nitty gritty research and did a fine job. Uh, opiate update from February 2021 in calendar year 2019, which was the latest data available, approximately 100 non-suicidal drug deaths involving opiates were recorded, 87% of which were fentanyl related. And in calendar year 2020, the number of similar deaths increased to 134.89% uh, of which were fentanyl related. Uh, according to the Department of Health's opiate scorecard, during the first quarter of calendar year 2020, nearly 1,000 Nalexon rescue kits were provided to Vermonters as an overdose prevention measure. Uh, third, in fiscal year 2019, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported 128 drug overdose cases in Vermont overall. And in fiscal year 2020, the number of overdose cases uh, increased to 146. Again, that's the Vermont number, not a national number. And Governor Philip Scott uh, proclaimed February 27, 2021 as Recovery Day, demonstrating uh, the state's commitment to supporting those with mental illness, addictions, and co-occurring uh, conditions. The fifth finding is that annually Overdose Awareness Day is observed internationally on August 31 to raise awareness of drug overdoses to reduce the associated stigma and to acknowledge the grief of the families and friends of persons who have experienced a drug overdose. And our final finding is that designating drug overdose awareness day as a Vermont commemorative day, which is different than a legal holiday, if I may explain, explain this is not a day that individuals have a day off, even though we're aware that's negotiated, but it's not on the potential list. It's a commemorative day, not unlike Arbor Day or POWMIA Day recognizes the importance of each person who has exp uh, experienced a drug overdose and it reminds Vermonters that death due to a drug overdose is preventable. Now, the actual statutory provisions. Uh, at 1 VSA 378, August 31 of each year is designated 
as drug overdose day. And that's the place where it would need to go in the calendar, um, in the statutes rather, it's the next spot in the commemorative list. Now, there's a second provision to this uh, that's statutory and not simply uh, session law language. There's a flag pro, pro, uh, protocol for overdose awareness day. This comes out of one VSA 496 F. The Department of Buildings and General Services shall direct in the flag flying protocol uh, established in 496 D of this title that the US flag and the Vermont state flag shall each be flown at half staff on all state owned flag poles, which is the extent of the authority of, of BGFs on August 31 each year in observance of Overdose Awareness Day. And the bill overall would take effect on July, 21, on July 1, 2021, which would mean that the first observed Overdose Awareness Day were this bill to pass would be August 31, 2021. Oh, any, um, any um, specific questions about that, Representative? Whoever you are, just thank you, Madam. Say what you want to say. <laughs> uh, I know Senator Rahm and I have talked about this before, um, and maybe Michael can answer. Do we have the, I guess, authority to lower a U.S. flag? I, th I think also we have Deb um, here who is our okay. flag expert. Okay, then I'll, I'll defer to her. Uh, let me say this and then defer to Deb. We had discussions of this within, within our staff at Ledge Council. Uh, Senator Rahm and I had multiple discussions, more than we prefer to count at this point, I think. And my final line was that I had concerns. We didn't give a definitive yay or nay because it's, we found it to be a bit unclear, but we did express concerns. Clearly, we have the authority on the state flag. And I'm going to defer to Deb from BGS on the federal question. Thank you, Michael. Well, you, are, um, you are muted, Deb. Can't hear. <laughs> there you go. I love idiot proof instructions. <laughs> so, Michael, I agree with you that it's very unclear. You know, when the governor's office tells me that we're lowering both the U.S. and the Vermont flag, do I say no, we're not? But I totally agree that U.S. code does not uh, authorize the governor to lower the flag, the U.S. flag in this situation. I, I um, read the, the federal code and it's very clear, most of it is around deaths. Right, yep. Yeah. And it's very specific deaths. Yeah, yeah, very specific. Okay. How many days and right. all that. Uh, also police. Uh, first responders. Officers, right, first responders, yeah. uh, veterans, individuals killed in war, those yep. situations. Presidents. There is not on the other side, as we were discussing in the office, there is not saying a thou may not. There's just, there's no thou may. Yeah. And I know that in other, a couple of states, I believe Kentucky has provided for it. So it's, it's an open question. And that's how our office viewed it as a, a, shall we say a murky open question, but there's no explicit yes or no under the federal statute. Again, with respect to the state law, Clearly, the General Assembly can make that decision with respect to the state flag. Yep, I agree. So, um, are there any questions about about this at all? I mean, I, I, we can. I guess if we put it in statute, then it is there, and if we get in trouble for lowering the the flag we get in trouble and we change the statute. Um, and not being a federal Dillon state, we can do what isn't prohibited um, as opposed to the way we treat our towns where they can only do what we allow. So, Senator Colomar. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. 
And so I, I'd like Senator Rom to know that was my hesitancy to sign on to this. And I'm wondering whether she would be willing to strike the provision above the federal or the US flag and just leave the Vermont flag. And if that were the case, I would definitely vote yes on the bill. Um, I suppose I, I'd, I'd look to Deborah if we can be less specific, but it would kind of be understood that the flags would be lowered and we just wouldn't put something in statute that does something we don't have the authority to do. That's oh. a fair question. What we, we, they, I think they would probably still lower all the flags, but we just wouldn't be directing them to do something that we don't have the authority to do. Would that make sense? Yeah, I, I believe that it should specifically say the Vermont flag. Okay. Because, because of the murky question about, um, yeah, I, I know that with the honor and remember flag that they yeah. were, very, you know, where okay. it would fly and what day it would come down and, you know, yeah. we, okay. yeah. Yeah. And having been, the, if I may, Madam Chair, having been the drafter of the bill, to which Deborah just referred, we were very careful in that drafting process not to mention the US flag. Yes. Okay. So if whatever you did in that context, I, I would be happy to do in this context. I don't, I'm looking at the chair because I don't want to prolong prolong this. You know, I don't know if it's a, a quick fix, but um, certainly respect that. And and I forwarded an email from, you know, the uh, parent who had requested this bill more about the point of the day. So, you know, I don't think there was a real focus on the U.S. flag as a, as a poignant part of the observation. So I'm just thinking out loud here, but I don't see a problem with that. So did Michael, did you have some language? Well, what I was thinking, since it's somewhat different in that we don't have a specific flag the way we did for Honor in America, yeah. the Green Mountain Boys. So I'm just scribbling here on my sheet. We could say of the section 4960 of this title that the Vermont state flag shall, uh, shall I'll get rid of the word each, shall be flown at hop staff, et cetera, et cetera, for the balance of the sentence. That, we, that the General Assembly clearly has the authority to do. And Mr. Patel also nodded his head, who, who you <laughs> credit for drafting. So <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, the two of us had the same discussion several times. So does that, um, <clears throat> it seems to me that that doesn't necessarily weaken it and it still makes it a really um, a big statement about the day. Mm -hmm. So can we do that? Yeah. Okay. I like the idea that the notice will go out to those 350 plus people around the state of Vermont to raise their awareness on that day. I like that a lot. And you know, they'll either participate and lower their flags or they will not. So um, anyway, but a lot of people ask to be included on the distribution list, so. And you're right, it <laughs> certainly will create awareness if they see some of the thing coming through all those 350 places. Yep. Yep. But... <laughs> and of course, like... Madam Chair, it will be published in the Green Books. Yep. So very, very much will be there. So um, should we do this as an amendment? Is that the easiest way to do this? I can certainly put together an amendment for you, Madam Chair. Uh, the, the only Senator question Rahm, is whether you want me to do a strike all or just simply a short amendment to deal with that session. Maybe the strike all is the better way to do yeah. it so that it doesn't raise. Exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yep. All right. So um, I would like, if possible, to just whip this out because, um, as we know, we are under some time constraints here. And um, so it, it, when, can I ask you what's a reasonable time? Probably you should ask Mr. Patel, what's a reasonable time to have this a strike all done by just striking out that one and getting it back to us. 
Yeah, I can do that by tomorrow or by so, the Yeah, if you'd send it to me, Mitch, I'd like to say take a look at it before we send it to editing. For so sure. What you're going to do is uh, I don't know if you've done a you you set it up as a uh, a strike law. It's all in the system, and it's going to be the same bill except as I said, it's going to take out the words the U.S. flag and each and and it's so and of course the word each so that it will read it'll read correctly. Awesome. Perfect. Can do. Perfect. So we will um, do that first thing tomorrow when we get um, back to committee so that we can get it up right away. Does that make sense? Everybody okay with that? Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And welcome, Mr. Patel. We haven't seen you here before. I should. We should have, um, you came on a little after we'd started, but we should introduce ourselves so that you know who we are. I'm Jeanette White from Wyndham County. I'm Anthony Polina from Washington County. Brian Collimore from Rutland County. Tasha Rahm from Chittenden County. And my fiance has a very big mustache that people appreciated when we went to India and he would absolutely love your mustache. I just have to say that. <laughs> and, and I don't know what has happened to us. Oh, Senator Clarkson had to leave us. She's from Windsor County and she is um, a big fan of the Vermont Law School. And uh, if I can introduce myself. Yes, please. Yeah. So, hi, my name is Mithil Patel. I am a 3L at Vermont Law School, and currently I'm working as a clinician with the Office of Legislative Counsel, and I had the opportunity to work on this bill I was just mentioned. So, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you for you. the mustache Thank compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Wish we were really in the state house in person so that we could actually meet you, but... All right. Okay, committee. I Madam think that... Chair? Yes. Are we still taking up the Montpelier Charter today? Yep. H-177? Yep. I'd love to get it voted out. Okay, then Tucker would like to remind us that there was a draft that we were, uh, an amendment that we were looking at last time we took this up. And I believe yeah. it's posted. It's 1.1. It's on our website. Okay, remind me what the amendment was again. Well, the, 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 the bill has written, uh, has come over from the House basically says, I'll just read you the half oh. sentence, oh. basically says that to vote in the Montpelier elections, you have to be a legal resident of the United States, et cetera, which means only non-citizens. It doesn't say you have to be a citizen to vote in Montpelier. They made a mistake by not putting that in. So the amendment would, the amendment would add a phrase that says, you, they would insert, insert the words, a citizen of the United States or a legal resident of the United States. Otherwise, yeah, because the, it, it, as written, it's only for non-citizens. Right. It seemed to apply that citizens couldn't couldn't vote. Couldn't vote. Right. Right. Got it. All the way over from that. the other chamber that way too. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. Do we have a a proposal? I mean, a um, motion. Mo a movement. Yeah. Well, do, do we have to do the amendment first? Yeah, we have to do the amendment first. So Is it we'll a be... committee amendment? Yes. Um, yeah, the, I mean, that anything that comes out of the committee is a committee amendment. Oh, I mean, right. it's, we're amending, the, the committee is okay. amending the bill. Right, sorry about that. So I'd move that we adopt the amendment 1.1 for H-177. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, Senator Rahm, would you like to call the roll? Yes. Should I text Senator Clarkson or just we hold it open? What is she doing again? Go to a rules committee meeting, I think. Join rules. Yeah, oh. Why did they set them during committee time? Anyway. You're not okay. missing a chair's meeting, are you, Madam Chair? No, it was canceled for today. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, if she could pop over here for one minute to vote, that would be great. I can text her really quick.
so I did text it or sometimes it's kind of an instantaneous response, but I don't know that she's seen the message yet. So and I good. sent her an invitation from within the meeting too. So maybe that'll pop up on her screen. Ah, here she is. <coughs> Hello, Senator Clarkson. In a flash, back from joint roles. It's like time travel. <laughs> Are you done there or did you just no, come back to vote? I just came back to vote because I was told to. Good. All right. So Senator Polina has moved that we amend um, H-177 um, as proposed in draft. 1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1.1, okay. <clears throat> and so and Senator Rahm, if you would. But may I just ask a question? If the motion's been made, but can we, uh, can I just be reminded how we changed it? I d I'm totally forgot that we had changed it at all. The way it was written, it seemed to imply that only non res only non-citizen residents could vote, that citizens couldn't vote. They kind I, of left I, that I, out. I, Right. Okay. Thanks. It's, you know, it's been a week or two and I just said, I thought, I know. Oh. right. Here. Thank you. Yes. Perfect. Senator Clarkson. Yes. Senator Collimore. Yes. Senator Polina. Yes. Myself, Senator Rahm. Yes. Senator White. Yes. And that now, <clears throat> would you like to um, move that we um, oh, yeah. report it favorably? So I moved. Okay, Senator Clarkson. Yes. Senator Collimore. No. Senator Polina. Yes. Myself, Senator Rahm. Yes. Senator White. Yes. And that passes 4-1-0. Thank you. And Senator Polina, I assume you would like to report this? I will. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. <coughs> May I go back to rules? <laughs> if you want to. Thank you.